So we're going to talk about the chimney sweeper, the innocence version and the experience version. And let's start with the innocence version here. And remember that um, Blake famously gives voice to those people who don't normally have a voice, the lowest of the low, the poor, the dispossessed, children. And here, this really is the lowest of the low. I mean, chimney sweepers were um, sort of child labor. They were, they were very often sort of sold by their parents, as we discover here, who were not cruel necessarily, but just desperate really for the money. And their lives were very often short. They would get caught in the chimneys, they would suffocate, they would die of diseases connected with the soot and so on and respiratory problems. So they they really were the sort of quintessential image of the evils of the Industrial Revolution and the evils of exploitation of the weakest in society by uh, everybody else, really. So here we have the chimney sweepers, and Blake gives him a voice, or gives several of them a voice. It's written in the ballad form again. When my mother died, I was very young. It sort of feels like one of those songs that people would sing in pubs, or that people would sing in market squares, or sell about contemporary issues, okay? My father, my father sold me well, yet my tongue could scarcely cry, weep, 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 weep. Here we have the image of the parent parental irresponsibility in a way, the, the parental betrayal. Um, parents often don't do very well in Blake. Um, he was often very resentful of his own parents who didn't believe the stories that he told them about the visions that he had and, and very often parents don't come very well out of things in Blake. Weep, 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 weep is a reference to the cry that the boys would um, call out as they were walking through the streets of London, sweep, 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 sweep. In other words, if anybody wanted their chimney swept, then it was like a sort of jingle that people would hear and they would call out for the services of the chimney sweep. But of course, weep, weep here is more tragic and more poignant because the child is so small and so young that his mouth can't get around sweep, sweep, the consonantal cluster, as we call it, of the S and the W. He can't pronounce it, and so it becomes weep, weep, which of course has connotations of sorrow and crying. I think the interesting word in the fourth line here is, so your chimneys I sweep. We have here direct address. The chimney sweep is talking to the reader. We are implicated, okay? We are the people who are employing these children. Your chimneys I sweep, and in soot I sleep. He then goes on to tell a story about little Tom Dacre. Um, contextually, his head would have been shaved uh, in order to stop it, like sort of catching fire in, uh, in, in his work. So this is what happened when the children started. But look at the way his hair curled like a lamb's back, the word lamb suggesting innocence, but also perhaps suggesting sacrifice and perhaps suggesting the link with Christ in many ways. And look at the way the chimney sweeper who's actually speaking the poem tries to comfort him, has a very positive outlook. For when your head's bare, you know that the soot cannot spoil your white hair. This sort of ability to see the best of things, even in the worst of times, really. Perhaps it's admirable in many ways. Perhaps it's a little bit poignant. A little bit tragic. Anyway, here we go, and look at the word. He then has a vision that night, thousands of sweepers, and again we get a sense of the multitude, the numbers of these people. This sort of personified in a general way, really, Dick, Joe, Ned, and Jack. 
locked up in coffins of black. Well, we think of the chimneys, perhaps, in which many of them died. It's an image of urban entrapment, the coffins of black, black, perhaps, suggesting the black of death, which contrasts with this vision of paradise, this vision of heaven that then follows. And by came an angel. We have to remind ourselves that Blake believed in angels. When he was a child, he thought he saw angels. Um, he was beaten by his parents when he came home late one day and said that he was talking to angels in trees. They didn't believe him, but he, he all his life, he, he claimed that he did believe in angels. And of course, he was a follower of the religious leader Swedenborg, who believed that religious manifestations were evident to us on earth, that, that God was present in human beings, that perhaps, maybe this is what Blake means, that, 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 that the presence of God is there to be seen, if only you can look. Anyway, in this vision, the angel comes, and look at how entrapment is contrasted here with freedom. He's got a key. He opens the coffins. He sets them all free. And look at this wonderfully naive vision of heaven that they have, that Blake puts into their heads. It's, it's green. It's connected with nature. It's connected with movement, leaping, laughing. We remember the leaping, laughing children in the nurse's song, that lovely alliteration, plain, leaping, laughing. And we have to remember, you know, the con it contrasts with the constricted movements of the chimney sweepers when they're actually doing their job. And here they can run and they can be free. And again, we think of, they're just living in dirt, the soot of the chimneys. The, their vision of heaven is connected with cleanliness, wash in a river, shine in the sun. And perhaps we think also of images of baptism here. We might think of paintings of John the Baptist baptizing Christ, washing in the river. Okay, so perhaps there's a religious connotation there. The bags left behind, the bags, of course, being the bags of their trade. And again, this very naive, childlike view of heaven, people rising up on clouds and playing in the wind. It's, it's, you can imagine sort of cherubs in old paintings, perhaps things that people would see on the walls of churches or in books. Anyway, there we have this, we come to the sort of moral that, uh, that uh, we have at the end here. He wakes up and we have this contrast between the beautiful vision and the grimness of their real lies. We rose in the dark, we got with our bags and our brushes to work. But somehow the vision is a source of comfort for the child. And we end with this little sermon, perhaps, this little homily, H-O-M, I-L-Y at the end. So if all do their duty, they need not fear harm. This sort of balanced sentence, if only you do what you're expected to do, you will come to good in the end. Okay, well, we need to decide how we take this. Do we take this at face value? Is it an innocent vision of the world that so long as you do what you have to do, you do your job in this life, you will go to heaven in the next life, so don't worry too much about what this life is like. Other people see it as being very ambiguous that Blake here is in some ways prefiguring or foreshadowing the famous words of Marx 50 or 60 years later, when Marx, Karl Marx, talked about religion being the opium of the people. And what he meant by that was, well, so long as you could tell people that they would get their reward in heaven, you could sell them this myth, then you didn't have to do anything about the terrible conditions they lived in now. You could say to people, well, you might be poor now, but you'll get your reward in heaven. So in other words, religion could be used as an excuse for social inaction, for not trying to make life better for people while they're on earth. 
Well, perhaps that is there. I don't know. Maybe Blake is prefiguring Marx there, and it is a little bit of a criticism, religion being used to excuse um, to excuse social inequalities on earth now. That is certainly the case if we turn to the experience um, companion piece, really, of the chimney sweeper. Here it is. A little black thing among the snow. Look at the contrast between the, 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 the chimney sweep is black, obviously, from the soot and the dirt. A little black thing. He's almost not a person. He's not a boy, but just a thing, like a scrap. Snow suggests the whiteness that contrasts with him, but also suggests coldness, friendlessness, hunger almost like a desert of cold, really, crying, weep, weep, in notes of woe. And they have this interesting dialogue. I mean, Blake very often constructs his poems as if they're dialogues. We don't really know who's speaking here. Where, where are the, thy father and mother, say? It doesn't matter. It's the poet, it's the persona. But then the chimney sweep himself has a voice. We have the voice of the boy. And Blake, of course, as we know, does this a lot. I think here we might get into quite interesting territory that in some ways what the boy says, it's not psychologically terribly convincing. I mean, he goes on to make a great political point at the end. And maybe if we wanted a psychologically accurate picture of what this little boy might say. He may not say it in such an articulate way, but in a way that doesn't matter. This is Blake using the persona, using the character to make a political point, a religious point. And that point is that this child has been sold into slavery. They clothed me in the clothes of death. Well, the dark clothes of the chimney sweep from the soot are also black like death. They taught me to sing the notes of woe. The notes of woe being weep, 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 weep. Remember, sweep, 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 sweep. That was the jingle to get the, the cry that they would make to get people to come and use the chimney sweep. But because he can't say it properly, it comes out as weep, weep, the notes of woe. And this devastating last stanza they think they have done me no injury and are gone to praise God and his priest and king who make up a heaven of our misery. Blatant, explicitly political, anti-authority point that Blake makes here through the voice of the child, but we suspect it's probably Blake's own view uh, in, the, in the voice of the child. And it's an attack on the establishment. We have these authority figures, the parents, the priests who rule the church, the king who's the vision of government, the embodiment of government. And they're going through the religious rituals. They've gone to church, they're lighting the candles, they're singing the hymns. They think they are being good, says Blake, because they are following the rituals of the church. But in fact... They're making up a heaven of our misery. They are ignoring the misery that exists on this earth now in the figure of this little boy. So it is a political poem prefiguring Marx by many decades. Religion is the opium of the people. <laughs>